Hello, I'm Dr. Jose Rojo. On March 9, 2016, I had an operation for ha uh, having a release of my carpal tunnel. We use an ultra MIS technique that, uh, following the, gui the guidelines that I published in, in 2013, and Dr. Tyson Cobbs from Iowa and me, myself, we operated on the same patient who was me. Uh, I have elaborated a few guidelines based on my experience as a patient for this kind of technique. I already had uh, some, some guidelines to my patients, but being, being a patient has given me some insights and I'd like to share them with, with my patients so that they know what they can do and what they can expect after surgery. They're simple guidelines, but there are some, some thoughts, some, some guidelines that I, I like to share with them. So this is what I feel out of the proceeding. For the first 24 hours, my suggestion to all my patients is to keep moving actively in a continuous manner the fist so that you keep doing a simple exercise like this. You try not to leave more than 10 minutes without doing it. Perhaps keeping it a little bit elevated above the heart level is quite uh, interesting to, to do because uh, you, feel, you feel less pressure from the inflammation that's developing. So keeping this exercise in an almost continuous manner except, except at, at sleep helps a lot and, and even though it's not too painful, I think it, it, it is part of a simple mechanism to accelerate your recovery. Then uh, stretching, I think is also important. That is a little bit more painful, but we're talking about pain that doesn't go over two or out of 10. And it's, it's about um, holding your, your hand with the other, other non-operated hand and pushing the palm and the fingers backwards as much as you can. That always stresses this area which has been operated. It is normal to feel pain, but I think it's, it's quite important to keep doing it all the time. Because there's probably a scar, or there is a scar that's developing there. And in this simple action, uh, it's keeping it somehow in a way that's not becoming adherent. And I, I felt that this simple action uh, decreases a lot local pain. Even though it's not the strong local pain, it's a simple measure to keep doing. Do a normal life. I think that is essential. We have, we have developed a, a procedure that fortunately allows for doing this. When we compare this procedure with the classic operations, even the mini open operations or the endoscopic operations, we cannot do this, the same. I mean, there's a, there's a wound there that needs to heal. There are stitches, but this is a different procedure. Here, the wound is healed. I mean, it's healing, it's gonna heal, healing very fast. It's a very small thing. We're talking about one millimeter. It's something that from that distance, I don't think that now uh, you can even see it. And even though it's been now two, uh, two weeks since we had the operation, we're talking about this simple small spot, a little bit less than two weeks. So we're talking about a, a small, very small wound, and that allows you for, for doing a normal, and I underline normal life. This means trying to do all of what you did before surgery. This is my, my main advice. This is what I've done with, to myself, and, uh, and I think that, that most patients should, should try doing this. Try, but I mean, if you felt that pain was, not, uh, was too, too high, then let's be pain what, what dictates what to do. This means try not to restrict yourself from the beginning thinking that you cannot do this or do that. Just, just try doing it, and if, if pain is bearable, do it. This is what I've always told my patients. This is what I've been doing these days. Now, lifting weights. Uh, lifting weights, I think we should, we should allow as, uh, doing as much as we, as we can. I mean, I've been, I've been doing everything. And if there was something that was hurting me a little bit in a, an uncomfortable manner, I was just trying it a bit later or the next day. And I think this is the way we, we all should do. I mean, as patients, um, this kind of operation, allows fortunately for lifting as much weight as you can tolerate work can you work afterwards well if your work involves an amazing amount of, of strength if you're if you're a manual worker and you and you really need to apply a lot of strength you may be limited because it's true that that um if you do a uh, you go for a hundred percent grip uh, you're gonna feel some pain there so if you're a manual worker you may need some days uh, off if you work on keyboards, 
I've been I've been using my keyboard for working in my own in, in uh, related stuff to my to my work for reports for I mean for doing the kind of work that that um, a surgeon does when he's in a we're in, a, in an office and I can per I could perfectly do it from the from day zero. Uh, fortunately, if you work with keyboards, I believe that this operation is is really suited for you. If you're manual if you're a manual worker. It's going to depend on, on the pain you feel. You may not be comfortable enough for doing 100% of your job. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm not sure what, what I could recommend to, to a specific uh, hand laborer because I, I believe that probably is gonna depend a lot on the kind of job that you do and the kind of specific actions you do with your hand. After the third day, um, I, I believe there's a drop a sudden drop in in the symptoms. They're not, as I always say, they're they're not very uh, major. I mean, it's pain, but bearable. But there's a big drop on on symptoms after the third day. This is what I felt. But I believe that it's important to keep stretching at least hourly. This way, the hand and the palm, because when you stretch, you feel you you still feel the 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 pain over here. And if you don't, if you stop doing it, because I I stopped doing it for. Uh, several hours one day and I felt that the, 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 the first time I restarted uh, then stretching I was I was feeling uh, pain that, that was not before when I kept my routine and my stretching routine going on. Uh, rub your hand I think that that's also important I think that uh, after the third day um, it's, it's quite interesting to keep desensitizing the, the palm by rubbing it against objects. I find, I find particularly easy uh, in, in uh, and quite nice to do it against against my my knee or my thigh. It's, it's a simple thing. You don't need a special object. And this simple rubbing against the clothing, uh, it really uh, alleviates the, the 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 awkward feelings you're 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 finding or you're feeling because you're 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 having you had an operation three days uh, before. What are the most painful actions you feel after surgery? Well, in my experience, the most painful action. Uh, the, the position that elicits more pain is this one. When you have the, the wrist getting flexed with the, with the, with the um, uh, fingers completely extended and, and exerting force against a, an object. This is where, where it becomes mo the most painful perhaps. And it's also painful when you do uh, uh, push-ups, uh, but it's not, it's not majorly painful. We're talking about maximum three uh, out, of, out of ten. With, I, mean, I mean, this is how I felt it, not with my push-ups. And this can become as well three, three over ten, ten I guess when uh, when you're especially when you're post uh, re very recently post operated. Now pinching like this uh, can become as well a little bit painful here, not as painful as as uh, doing push-ups, but uh, but those are the three uh, uh, actions that I felt uh, that can elicit more pain. So that the patient should know that 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 can, that can happen. Uh, should I not do? push-ups or pinch like this or do things like like put pushing an object like this I, I think you should I mean we all should this is an operation that's been des designed for this and and I believe you should all, all the time be trying to be you know active and pushing forward finally post-operative pain um, I just wanted to summarize what, what were my impressions uh, rest for the first 48 hour, 48 hours I felt 1.5 out of 10 more or less uh, of intermittent pain. Then it disappeared uh, at rest. And when I lifted weights uh, for the first three days, I felt uh, that pain was uh, normally under three out of 10. Then after the third day, uh, maximum effort, I felt that it was uh, around two. And, and when getting close to the second week, the, the, the amount of pain is, is now negligible. It's like one uh, uh, over 10 when I when I'm maximum effort. Still, there's some pain there. So, this is basically my perception on, on in my in my guidelines. I will tell and underline to my patients for what to do after surgery, what to expect. And even though I must underline that, uh, I feel that I've been part of the lucky bunch that have had a very good uh, satisfactory result, uh, which is very important to understand this because uh, I've seen uh, several times how some patients may not have a result as good as, as this one. Some people may have uh, a lot more pain and that pain needs to be dealt with and sometimes you need even uh, rehabilitation for a few days. 
Uh, but if things go the way I'm feeling them and the way I've also seen them many times in, in, in most of my patients, uh, in fact, um, I think that a patient should expect this kind of, uh, of, of guidelines to be applied to his case or her case. So this is basically it. Thank you very much and hope to see you in another occasion.